To differentiate between pleural rub and pericardial rub, have the patient hold their breath. If the rub goes away, it is pleural. If it continues, it is cardiac. Continuous adventitious sounds are connected musical sounds. They include wheezes and stridor. A sibilant wheeze is high-pitched, a polyphonic sound, meaning containing multiple notes of sound. They may occur with both inspiration and expiration, but predominate in inspiration. They denote diffuse airway obstruction, such as seen in acute asthma or chronic emphysema. The second type of wheeze, formerly called ronchi, is low-pitched and monophonic, a snoring or moaning sound. They are also heard throughout the cycle, but tend to be more prominent during expiration. They are heard in bronchitis or single bronchus obstruction. The last of the common adventitious sounds is stridor. It is a high-pitched crowing sound, which is louder in the neck than in the chest because it originates in the larynx, or trachea. It is common in croup, epiglottitis, and foreign body aspiration, and mostly occurs in children due to their relatively small airway. Stridor should be treated as an emergency. Document your findings on the assessment record, noting the location of any adventitious sounds. An important adjunct to respiratory assessment is the use of pulse oximetry and non-invasive carbon dioxide monitoring. Pulse oximeters read the oxygen saturation level through the skin using a probe applied to the finger or earlobe. Normal readings are between 95 and 100 percent, although patients with chronic lung disorders may never achieve a saturation level this high. Assessment of blood saturation using a portable oximeter with a finger probe is now standard in almost all facilities. It is important to remember that the pulse oximeter only reads oxygen saturation. If the patient is very anemic, even with a saturation of 100%, there may be inadequate oxygenation of the tissues. This is why arterial blood gas testing is done on patients with significant respiratory compromise. The non-invasive CO2 monitor is a newer device. It can read end tidal carbon dioxide levels through a nasal cannula or via an ear probe. The normal range of CO2 is 35 to 45 milliequivalents per liter, the same as the CO2 readings obtained in an arterial blood gas. Repeat auscultation on the posterior thorax using a pattern as on the anterior chest. If the patient has respiratory compromise, you can assess just the posterior chest. This will give adequate information and reduce the stress of the exam. Place your hands on the posterior chest below the scapulae with the tips of your thumbs meeting over the spinal column. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and observe for equal outward movement of your hands as the rib cage expands. <laughs> 